afternoon, everyone. Today, I'll begin my presentation in a slightly unconventional manner. Instead of talking about where my project is located in the grand scheme of science research, I'm going to go a bit into how my project came to be in, in, the, um, in the context of my lab research over the summer. So what my lab specializes in is synthesizing superconductors. And we want to synthesize superconductors in the most precise and controlled manner as possible. And that is by using molecular beam epitaxy. MBE is a manner of crystal on crystal growth. In this case, we have a crystalline substrate and we build a crystalline superconductor above that. How we do this is that we have a substrate suspended in the middle of an MBE chamber. This chamber is put under an ultra high vacuum environment facilitated by a vacuum pump. And we have two K cells at the base of the MBE chamber, and these K cells bring metals in them to an extremely high temperature such that the metals sublime. Shutters on the K cells open the K cells such that metals are selectively deposited on the substrate surface. Alternating the opening and closing of the shutters gives us a monolayer structure, as can be seen in this diagram. What this is what is critical about this process is that there has to be a very um, specific compatibility between the substrate we use and the superconductor that lies above it. The substrate we use acts as a template for the supercon superconductor atoms to grow on top of, which means that it needs to have a high lattice compatibility. So one of the substrates that we use has a perovskite structure. This is an ABX3 structure with a cubic unit cell. A and B are metal cations, and X is a anion, which is typically oxygen. The met, um, atoms A are located at the cube corner positions of the, cubic unit, of the cubic unit cell, and B is located at the body center position, with X located at the face centered positions of the cubic unit cell. So the problem that motivated my research was the difference between the two different crystal orientations that this cubic unit cell could lie in. The substrate that the manufacturer sent us had been mislabeled, and we didn't know which of the cubic unit cells had which structure. Essentially, the 001 substrate lies on the green plane that is shown in the diagram, and the 110 lies on the red plane. What this means is that the 001 substrate has a three-dimensional structure that looks like this, where the green plane is at the surface of the substrate, and the 110 structure has the red plane at the surface of the substrate. The main distinction between these two stru uh, structures is that the surface layer structure is slightly different. Where the 001 substrate has a square structure on the surface, the 110 uh, substrate has a rectangular structure. And this creates a problem because we need to know what these shapes are so that we can decide what kind of superconductors we can grow on top of these surfaces. So now back to the perovskite structure. I decided to base my project upon this to use to find a method to easily and quickly identify which crystal plane orientation the substrate lied upon. So apart from the 001 and the 110 uh, structures, I decided to also look at the 111 surface structure. It also happens to have a six-fold rotational symmetry compared to the two-fold and four-fold rotational symmetries of the 110 and 001 substrates, respectively. So the manner in which we use to characterize the su 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 surface structure of the substrate was reflection high energy electron diffraction, also known as REED. Essentially, it is using an electron gun and shining a beam of high energy electrons on the substrate surface. As the electrons interact with the substrate surface, they diffract and inter um, constructively or destructively interfere with each other to form reed patterns on the detector. The reed patterns appear like this. The primary structure of reed patterns are these vertical streaks, as you can see in this diagram, but due to secondary processes that happen, other streaks can form on the diagram. In this case, we call them Kikuchi lines. These Kikuchi lines are diagonal lines that we can see on the read pattern caused by the inelastic scattering of electrons. What this means is that instead of bouncing off the surfaces of the substrate that are parallel to the, um, the planes of the substrate that are parallel to the surface of the substrate, the electrons bounce off other crystal planes instead. And this is the, also the reason why the lines that we see on the screen are diagonal and not, par um, and are not vertical. So my approach to read is unique in that typical approaches to read use a fixed uh, electron gun, substrate, and detector positioning, whereas my approach to read involves actually rotating the substrate in the, plane, um, in, the, in the same plane as the surface in order to determine the rotational symmetry of the substrate in question. So my project capitalizes on the fact that each of the different crystal structures has a different um, rotation, has different rotational symmetry, and rotating the 
crystal by different degrees can allow us to reobtain the same Kikuchi line pattern that we've seen initially. So we moved into an experimental method of determining substrate, um, uh, determining crystal su uh, su orientation. What we hypothesized is that the 001 crystal would need a rotation of either 90 degrees or 100 degrees, 180 degrees, I'm sorry, to reobtain the same Kikuchi line pattern, whereas the substrate that has a 110 crystal orientation would require a rotation of only 180 degrees. And correspondingly, the 111 substrate having six-fold symmetry would require a rotation of a multiple of 60 degrees. Experimentally, we tested this on the strontium titanate perovskite structure that is commonly used as a substrate for superconductor growth. This is the 111 um, uh, crystal structure. And what we see is that when we plot out the Kikuchi lines of the uh, substrate, and after we rotate the substrate by 60 degrees, we obtain a, a similar pattern. To make this clearer, we superimpose the two sets of Kikuchi lines we obtain and qualitatively assess that these two sets of Kikuchi lines are the same pattern. And this corresponds with our hypothesis that this substrate would need 60 degrees of rotation to reobtain the same Kikuchi line structure. We did this with the rest of the substrates at the angles that we proposed would give us the same Kikuchi line structure. And we also did this with the substrates rotated to a wrong angle. In this case, um, what is shown here is a 111 sample rotated by 90 degrees. Ultimately, what this method brings into read analysis is the fact that it can be done quickly and simply without the need to put in a lot of numbers, a lot of um, figures that come from distances between electron gun and substrate surface or substrate surface and the detector screen. Because all we need is to rotate the sample and assess the Kikuchi lines that we see on the read detector. This is a very simplified and streamlined process compared to the very complex mathematics that goes into converting what we see on the read pattern into an actual physical lattice structure. So my method allows us to determine the crystal plane rotational symmetry of a substrate. And the perk of this is that it can be generalized to all crystal structures, not just the perovskite structures that we've studied, but any crystal structure that we have can be analyzed using this method. Finally, this is, a, this is a, another way, a new way to use read analysis to describe a crystal structure, and this has enabled us to use read analysis in a more convenient, a, more, a quicker, and a faster approach, especially if we want to use these um, this method as a pre-MBE verification process of the substrate um, structure. Some of the future work that I'm looking at working on is actually having automated read analysis for the specific purpose of determining rotational symmetry. And this is mainly because the method that I used in my, in my uh, that I have, I have proposed involves more of um, qual qualitative analysis and manually plotting the points on the Kikuchi lines to form them into curves. So my proposed method would be to automatically de detect and draw out the Kikuchi lines on the image that we obtain, and following which fit functions to these lines and have a quantitative measure of how similar or different Kikuchi lines are. And if we can automate this all, we can make the process even quicker. This would reduce human involvement and uncertainty that is brought into this presentation, as um, into this project, as we determine the Kikuchi line structures. Finally, um, I'd like to acknowledge all the people who have helped me tremendously through this project. Um, first, my, pro uh, my mentor, Professor Ilya Zelkovich from Boston College, my lab, uh, my lab mentors, Gaoshang, Zhao He, Ren Zheng, Brian Tia, and Spencer, um, Sam, who's been an amazing tutor throughout this journey, Kavita, my awesome lab partner, Boston College for kindly hosting me in, um, in this research, RSI, CEE, MIT, and finally, finally um, Ministry of Education, Singapore for sponsoring my journey. And also, um, one quick note of thanks to the teaching assistants, Avi and Shreya, who have helped me tremendously along the way as well. Thank you. We'll um, now take questions from the panel of judges. Yes. One of the things you mentioned in your future work is the idea of automating this comparison of the lines. Uh, so you did these by hand, uh, 
going through plotting the, the lines and then looking at them to compare. By looking at them by eye, what sorts of challenges do you see for automating this process? Oops, wrong way. All right, one of the main challenges is actually identifying where the Kikuchi lines are will be a challenge because one of the reasons why they are so hard to detect is because they are caused by inelastic scattering. So the intensity of these lines depicted on the read pattern is much lower. And the issue here would be if we want to detect the Kikuchi lines, locate the Kikuchi lines by looking at differences in pixel luminosity, that will pose an issue because we need to very carefully define thresholds for which pixel luminosity we want to select. Am I allowed to, even though I'm, I am an alum, I'm not a judge, but, uh, but I am a physicist. So, um, uh, so in this picture here, and you, you pointed out that the Kikuchi lines should be uh, dimmer because they're um, not elastic scattering, but it looks like they're actually as bright as the, the read lines. There, there are some bright points in the plot, but do you have an understanding of uh, the relative uh, strength of those diagonal versus um, straight lines? Um, OK. So essentially, the straight lines are formed by the elastic scattering that happens on the surface. But one of the variables that c defines the luminosity of these vertical lines is also the smoothness of the su substrate surface. In this case, our substrate surface was not very smooth. So the lines, that the vertical lines that we got were not as clear as the ones that uh, I showed in a previous slide. So that also confounds many things because we need to figure out exactly which are the parameter, uh, which are the limits, what are the thresholds for each of the Kikuchi line structures that we have. Thanks. Any further questions from the judges? Any questions from the audience? Yes, sir. In the back. So my question is about how sensitive this is to the original orientation. Like, are there certain rotations that? Uh, that give you a good signal versus uh, starting rotations that have a bad signal? All right, so the question is whether um, the presence of Kikuchi lines is contingent on the angle, the initial rotating rotation of, this, um, of the substrate. Is that right? All right. Um, when we put, when we first put the substrate into the, um, into the MBE chamber and we load the substrate in, um, there are certain angles that give you more definite Kikuchi lines than other angles. So the initial starting angle is chosen by um, quantity, uh, qualitatively just looking at the read images as I rotate the structure and seeing at which points we get more defined Kikuchi lines. And that will be the baseline for our um, for rotate, rotation. The main source of uncertainty in this case would be me having to manually plot out the points on the Kikuchi lines and then um, fitting, arbitrarily fitting a curve to these points. So um, the solution to that would be the further work that I illustrated before of um, using algorithms to detect where the Kikuchi, Kikuchi lines are. Um, it's unlikely to be a source of uncertainty. Other questions? Okay. Thank you very much, Claire. <laughs>